Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Saturday live stream. So just as the thumbnail and title suggest, we're going to talk about ranges for the Bitcoin price action. And uh, we'll get into that. And then we also have to talk about, uh, of course, the giveaway that uh, we had talked about in X that we're going to be giving away $500 worth of USDT brought to you by Albera Protocol, which is what I be uh, actually have uh, invested into, which is no surprise to anybody. So before we... Uh, jump in let me just uh state this which is price predictions are not only are they worthless uh they are also dangerous and they're dangerous because when you get a price prediction you start to believe that it has to go to this end point or else it's worthless or else you can't sell or else you can't take profits and this actually happened to me in the last cycle i predicted that uh, bitcoin would go to 150k and then I adjusted it to 100K and didn't even do that. And I still say that we got screwed out of a proper bull run because of the shenanigans that were going on behind the scenes with Three Arrows Capital, with Voyager and Celsius and BlockFi, and of course, FTX. So when I talk about these, if it's we talk about predictions, again, worthless. Don't do anything for us. However, ranges, I think uh, something that we could take to, to take a look at and see where we're actually going. So uh, for this one, the title was five to five hundred thousand dollars for Bitcoin. Now I always say that because when people ask me, and inevitably they will always ask me the same thing, Rob, what's your price prediction? And I say, well, Bitcoin could be somewhere between five dollars and five hundred thousand dollars by the end of 2024, and I think I nailed that range. But what I want to take a look at today was uh, just where we could actually potentially go. And this actually kind of stems from, there was a great video put out by Bob Lucas. There's a link in the description for this. And he talks about a left translated cycle. And what that essentially means is that if we start to hit specific numbers and go to a specific ranges, of course, this is all TA, I'm not a TA person, but we could have some type of uh, blow off top in December of 2024, and then we could start to decline. Now, if that happens, great. If it doesn't happen, great. Because if it doesn't happen, then we go to right translated cycle, which is essentially what we are all used to for your cycles. We get a blow off top around uh, April to November in 2025. I would not be uh, against that, but we must plan for those things and take a look at if this is a left translated cycle, and again, it's anybody's guess, but uh, you can watch that video, links in the description. And uh, what I took a look at was, first of all, I wanna see a total crypto market cap and trend line. This is from Ben's website into the cryptoverse. And uh, it's quite interesting, actually. Today, I don't know if you know this, let me blow this up so you can see this. Today, we are at uh, fair market value for the total crypto market. Isn't that crazy to think about? We're at a, a actual fair market value, we're not up, we're not down, we're pretty much where we're supposed to be. And the fair value is roughly 2.39 trillion market cap. And if we look at it right now, I think we're somewhere around that, that range for a fair value. The upper band would be 22 trillion, which we uh, have not ever hit. And of course the lower band we can see over here is 807 billion. And we haven't seen something like that in since, gosh, no, no, excuse me, excuse me, May of 2022. See, June, yeah, June of 2022. And of course, that was when we had just rocketed off of our uh, all-time high around November of 2021, and people were still in disbelief. Remember those times when we had a nice price action up here and people were talking about, it's gonna be a hyper cycle and it's gonna just keep going for forever, our extended cycle. And uh, we're just gonna keep going to the moon and Bitcoin will go to a million dollars uh, because there's a supply shortage and everybody's gonna buy it up. Does that sound familiar to you? Just put that in the back of your head as we move forward. So uh, right now, fair market value, fantastic. Everything is going just uh, exactly as potentially planned. So if we take a look then at the Bitcoin logarithmic regression bands, which of course is bubbles and non-bubbles. This is where it gets quite interesting, actually. So if we can blow this up, and this is why I say there were shenanigans, because it's just trend lines, just upper bands of bubbles and non-bubble bands and just drawing lines, which is which has actually played out pretty well over a time frame. We can see that, you know, back in 2011, we have these bubble bands. 
and the upper band, you know, hit off in 2011. And then we hit there 2013. And then we were in an upper band in 2017. And everything was going according to plan until, again, 2021. I still think we got screwed out of that, that, that bull run. There was something wrong. And we can see that it's actually cons- going, some would say consolidation, but we're still going up over here in 2024 and beyond. But look at this. If we would have actually had that bull run, the trajectory of this logarithm regression band would not be where it is today. We would not be in this uh, kind of sloping downward area. But even as it is, I would like for everybody to notice this. If Bob Lucas is right, and let's, I mean, he's right in one way. We're either going to get a blow off top in 2025 or we're going to get some crazy blow off top in 2024. I don't care when it is. If it's 2025, great, because that means we have all the time in the world to keep accumulating. But let's just say that this actually happens. And again, we're taking a look at lower bands, upper bands, bubble upper bands, because we're going to blow past these uh, non-bubble bands here. So let's take it to December of 2024. Uh, Oops, I already passed it. It seems like we're going forever, but it's not. Look at this. So let's just take 12 December. If we're looking at that, and this of course is just, this is just Bitcoin, not the entire crypto market cap. But if we take a look here, that would give us a range, again, a range of the non-bubble upper of 105,000. Okay. Now, does that mean that Bitcoin absolutely has to hit that? No, it doesn't. There's a lot of things to consider. There's MVRV Z score. There's Puel multiple. There is the Pi cycle top. There is time and risk bands. There is the fear and greed index. There's a host of other things that you can look at. So don't just look at this and go, okay, 105,000. Gotcha, Rob. This is what it has to do before I start taking profits. And that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying that if we take a look at this, it looks fairly reasonable. 105,000. And like we've talked about before, we are way ahead of schedule when we're talking about the price appreciation before the halving. Usually at this point, we are 60% below our all time high. And right now, we're like at 5 to 7% below the all time high. Anyhow, if we're looking at this, it's 105,000 for the non bubble upper. Not too bad, which is essentially right here. Which, if we come over here, we almost actually hit that. And if we keep going up and take a look at it, where, where could it be? Well, the bubble lower band could be 226,000. Would anybody have any problem with a Bitcoin at 226,000? I wouldn't. And the upper band is 337. But there's a, another criteria or another option that we may not consider, which is this. Because we did not, again, hit a reasonable, like I say, we got screwed out of a, a nice bull run. Because that, maybe at this point, we overcompensate. I'm not saying we're going to hit a 500,000 Bitcoin. I'm just saying that these are the ranges that it could be, just taking a look and extrapolating these things out. And of course, as we see, all the ETFs, there's only 900 Bitcoin that's being produced every single day by Bitcoin miners. And there's all, roughly around 10,000 that are being gobbled up by these ETFs. And then of course, April 20th, or somewhere around there, that'll be 450 Bitcoin. And there'll still be people asking for it at 10,000. And there's also new ETF participants getting into the mix. So right now, I mean, if this uh, holds true, we're looking for the bull run that we were actually due in 2021. And that's a range for you. So let me just think about that in the comment section. This is kind of a, uh, a bullish video. Not my forte, but uh, it is what it is. I mean, this is the data. This is what we're looking at. So there's that piece. And then also, I want to bring to everybody's attention because we put a lot of emphasis on Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is going to do well, I think. I I don't think by the end of 2024, we'll still be at 62,000 or whatever it is today. However, remember, there's these things called altcoins. I know some people hate altcoins and they think they're trash. And, and let's be honest, most are. <laughs> but in the bull run, things do quite well. And uh, we had been doing a, a DCA series since September 1st, 2023. And I picked September 1st because 
historically, that is the worst month for the crypto, Bitcoin, digital asset market, as well as the traditional stock market. September is a horrible month. And I picked that to show everybody just how low we could go. And of course I screwed up because September was a fantastic month for some reason, but it is what it is. And I said, okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put 10 bucks in a day on Bitcoin. And also we're gonna pick a bunch of different projects. I picked Ethereum, Solana, Cardano, Dogecoin, Doge. AVAX, Link, Polkadot, Matic, Atom, Near, Immutable X, Stax, and, and Celestia. And you can go back to those videos. I think I added, I don't think I had Celestia on there and Immutable X, but uh, we're just taking a look at it. Things. And I just want to show you that don't fade the altcoin market. I know some people say, well, they're not at their all time highs. Well, that's good. I don't want them at the all time highs. Well, I'm going to stay low because I keep buying right now. And if we just take a look here at how well we would have done over time from September 1st, 2023, look at this. You're doing just 10 bucks a day, 10 bucks a day. It doesn't really matter. 10 bucks a day, 10 bucks a week, it's the percentages. Well, we'll alter it a bit. You're all right. But if we just kind of take a look at, look at this, we're doing pretty good. And take a look at where Bitcoin is. Like November 3rd, you're like halfway there. You're like right in the middle. You're up 23%. Yay. Solana, you're up 75%. Chainlink, you're up 53%. Near 32. Ada, 27. Stacks, 25. AVAX, 24 by 9, 23.4 for Bitcoin. Let's keep going. And we're lowing, we're going, we're walking, we're walking. Look at this. December 10th. Bitcoin's only up 40%. Matic beats you. Doge beats you. Dot beats you. Stack. AVAX beats you by 212%. Let's keep going. But you see where I'm going with this, right? Bitcoin will do really well. Bitcoin, I don't think anything will flip Bitcoin. Bitcoin is probably the best thing that's out there right now. And of course, people will disagree with me in the comment section. It is the safest asset in the most volatile market that we potentially have. But over time, gains are there and they are there to be had. And of course, yes, in this market, anything can happen. But just look at this. Look at this right here, February 13th. Bitcoin is one, two, three, four, five, number six. We're in 14, 14, yeah. It's below the 50% line. So, I mean, you're still at 41%, but look at this. Immutable X, Stack, Solana, AVAX, Near, Link, Tia, ADA, then Bitcoin. Now, going over here, we can see that actually Ah, Bitcoin's still not bad. So even if you got in September 2023, uh, so September, October, November, December, January, February, six months ago, you're doing pretty good. But you would have done a little bit better on alts. I'm not saying to get an alts. I'm just saying don't fade alts because there is a piece for those. Anyhow, that concludes that piece. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. I still uh, am dollar cost averaging uh, Bitcoin and a ton of alts. Some are daily, some are every three days, and some are every week. But I do think they have their place. And uh, I think getting into the right one at the right time will uh, be life changing money, but I can't say what it is. All right. So that concludes that piece. Now let's get into uh, the giveaway. So, Alpha Protocol. Of course, you know that uh, I invested into it. I don't talk about anything unless I invest into it. They reached out to, to me and said, hey, how'd you like some tokens? Nah, not really. How about you give me 500 bucks and I'll give it away to my, my subscribers? They said, sure. So they gave me $500 in USDT on BEP20. BEP20 is uh, the Binance Smart Chain. So what we're going to do right now, first of all, if you'd like to find out why I invested into Alvara, which is essentially a, uh, a DeFi hedge fund, uh, there's a link in the description. It's for Dan DGen channel. That's where like all the risky stuff is. I keep that separate. Uh, that was two weeks ago. And it looks like they're going to be listing on Uniswap on the 4th of March. Just so everybody knows, once you have an initial listing or an IDO, initial DEX offering, once that happens, uh, in the first couple hours, it goes crazy. Usually it goes straight up. But after that, usually there's a big dump. So if you're going to get into this and you believe in the project, uh, maybe sit in the sidelines for a little bit on the Uniswap. If you want to be a gambler, have at it. 
uh, and of course that'll be over there on Uniswap and I'll talk about it, but that's up to you. Now let's do the giveaway. Hopefully this works pretty well. I haven't used Twitter picker in a while. I like to do these things live. So it's very simple, twitterpicker.com. Uh, you put in the, the URL for the tweet itself, which I've already done. And of course on this thing, you had to follow Al Alvara protocol, which is their X account. So let's see. So that looks good. Profile picture must, or the profile must have a picture, tweet count, any age, one month or more, latest tweet in the past month. That's reasonable. So you can make it uh, congruent. All right, so continue. Hey, look at all these people, 60 entries. Dr. Crypto, Douglas Baker, a whole lot of people. H Coin Whale, da da da, no one, all right. No one cares, get to the thing, Rob. All right, so out of all those people that did all those things and retweeted and all that stuff, uh, we had 60 people in there. Let's begin the drawing. Whoops. Pokes. Congratulations. Unfortunately, I screwed up. So let's see here. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, congratulations, Poach. I'm going to follow you, and then I'll write you in a little bit. All right. Let's go back because there's supposed to be five winners, Rob. Let's see, let's make that four. Huh? Do this again. Huh? Load tweet. All right, that worked out pretty well. Let's see, and this one, you gotta follow Alvara. So it'll be four more. reason to go three wise all right let's see four winners tweet count any picture description da, da 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 all right continue hope poach doesn't win again and let's begin drawing for those four winners who's supposed to be total ah, all right that's better all right orlando sasha gustavo marco i will be uh reaching out to you uh via on x and of course, make sure that it's me. You can verify that with the person that actually has over 160,000 followers on X. But uh, I'll be asking you for your Binance Smart Chain uh, wallet, and I'll send you $100 with the tether. Thanks for playing. And that's it uh, for that piece. Now, uh, everybody, I guess there's a, well, there's a couple of things. Let's see here. Now I got gotcha. you. Oh. Also, for the DGEM part, if uh, if you're curious as to what I've been investing into lately and previously, there's a link in the description, and it's the my DGEN chart. You can click on that, and there's all the things that I've actually invested into and even the new ones. Also, how much uh, I made and the gains and what the investment's worth now. So, like, some of these are pretty good. Like, Genso Kishi, I put in 5000 went to half a million at its all-time high. Everdome, I put in 1000 yeah, got 16,000. Fame did really good. 1,000 bucks, went to 47,000. Sweatcoin put in 25,000, 157,000 worth of worth. Now, that's at the all time high. Did Rob sell at the all time high? Absolutely not. Because I can't, I can't time it. Actually, I've actually layered out a little bit, except for Sweatcoin. I didn't really, I got uh, locked up because I was, uh, I was on a special round and they had to lock me for a full year. And then when I got it back out a year, it really didn't do much for me. So it's like at a penny. So right now the investments, uh, again, so Kishi is still up 13,000. That's pretty good. But Everdome, 120 bucks. Fame is only worth $70. Pretty sad. And sweat coins worth 17,000. Eh, that's pretty close. We'll see how far Kana, Ivan Pay, and Alvarado. And remember, this was during, uh, well, one of these was during the all time high, but the rest of them were during the, during the bear market. And that's it. Just trying to be transparent. That's it for everybody. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive.